Hey guys, Bob Morreale here with the Tuning School, and today we're going to teach you why you don't want to turn off your knock sensors or desensitize them unless you absolutely have to. And in this video, we're going to go through the three steps that you need to make sure you do before you go down that road and potentially damage or destroy your engine. Hey guys, Bob Morreale here with The Tuning School and today I'm going to talk to you for just a little bit about knock and why it's bad. So knock in itself is when the fuel combusts on its own. So that means that for some reason, maybe the air fuel mixture was too lean or the spark advance was a little too much. Uh, what that means is that the fuel has self ignited. So it could hit a hot spot in the chamber or for whatever reason, the fuel didn't ignite when it was supposed to at the right time. And so when that occurs, what happens is the piston is usually on its way up and then the fuel ignites before it's supposed to and then that creates a shock wave and the piston literally rattles and fights its way up or down in the bore. So that's the noise that you hear. Now, why is that bad? Well, it should be pretty obvious that it's bad because those shock waves happen at the wrong time. So it's not happening when the piston is getting pushed down at the right time. So it creates all sorts of problems and engine damage internally. So you really don't want to have knock happening. So now that you understand why knock happens, you need to understand that there are some prevention uh, devices on your engine to keep it from getting worse. And they're called knock sensors. Now, knock sensors are there so that they're kind of like little microphones. And they're reporting all this information back to the computer, which then gets to decide what's knock. Now, that leads me to my real point of the video today. We get a lot of tech support requests here at the tuning school. And if I see one more tech support request where a tuner has turned off the knock sensors, I might just go mad. And so my advice is that you don't turn off the knock sensors. If your tuner has done that, you need to find a new tuner. Usually there's a process that we go through before we say that the knock sensors have to be turned off or desensitized because everybody says, oh, turn them off or desensitize them because they're picking up false knock or engine noise because you've modified the engine in some way that now makes noise. So what I recommend is that you follow a basic and simple procedure. If you're tuning the car or your tuner is tuning the car and he says, oh, there's knock, we need to turn off the knock sensors. We don't immediately do that. We think of it the opposite way. We think of it as you need to prove that that knock is false. So how do you do that? How do you prove that it's not real? So the first step, is that you look in your, in your scan and you realize where the knock is occurring and how severe it is and then you go and you try and make sure that the fuel is right and that the spark looks okay and that it's not insanely high. And so if it's still knocking you can say okay we'll pull a little bit of spark advance out or we'll richen the fuel up. Now if you don't see any change whatsoever after you've done that it could be false because usually you will see some reduction in the amount of knock that you're seeing if it's real. So another uh, step we'll take after that is we'll go ahead and look at the pattern. Real knock looks like a stair step. It gets worse and worse and worse the longer that you're in the throttle. And the reason for that is once the engine starts knocking, it usually is like a runaway train. It gets worse and worse and worse because you can't stop it once it's already started unless you get off the throttle. It tends to get worse. So we'll look at that pattern. False knock, on the other hand, usually just looks like little blips here and there, random noises that are being picked up. So you can look at that pattern. But then again, there is a third step to the process. And usually what that means is you need to get the fuel level a bit lower, somewhere around a third or a quarter of a tank, and then add some race fuel or some other way of enhancing the octane. And so what you're trying to do is provide a resistance to pre-ignition or to knocking or detonation. So if you've done those three things, you rich in the air fuel or you make sure the air fuel is right, you've reduced the timing, and then thirdly, you have added some better octane and you've repeated the same test over and over again. Only then can you prove or disprove that it's real or false knock. And so once you're satisfied with that, if you see absolutely no change in your knock retard and you've done fuel, timing, and octane enhancement, then you can safely say that it's false. But that's always a last resort and a last step, in which case your tuner or you would want to go ahead and start by not turning off the knock sensors, but desensitizing them 5% at a time until it goes away. Because ultimately, 
those knock sensors are about your only safety device besides your ear. And the reality is your ears don't always pick up the knock that destroys your engine. So if you can avoid it, don't desensitize them, don't turn them off, but always try and prove that your knock is false before just jumping to that conclusion. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us through thetuningschool.com or give us a call at 727-264-8875. Thanks.